Hello and welcome to Scripps News. I'm Alexa Liaco. We have breaking news this afternoon. President Joe Biden is ending his 2024 bid for the White House. This all started after that disastrous debate performance. Doubts only grew that he was fit to serve for four more years. He just released a letter, a letter minutes ago saying this. I want to read it to you. My fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. We've made historic investments in rebuilding our nation, in lowering prescription drug costs for seniors, and in expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court, and passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. Together we overcame a once in a century pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president. And while it may have been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work. And let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together. We just have to remember we are the United States of America. Again, breaking news, a letter released from President Joe Biden in just the last few minutes. He is stepping out of the 2024 race. I want to bring in Chris Whipple to talk all about this. Uh, Chris, you are um, very familiar with the Biden family. You corresponded with Biden, writing a book about him. What's your take on, on what just happened? Well, absolutely extraordinary moment, and it's been the wildest political drama of my lifetime. Uh, you know, a, a, a drama that uh, no screenwriter could have dreamed up, and it's about to get, I think, even, even more interesting. But I'm thinking about Joe Biden right now and how difficult this decision had to be for him. I mean, this is a guy who has time after time after time defied the experts and uh, what he would probably call the elites when they counted him out. He was counted out after the Iowa caucus in uh, 2020. He was declared dead and buried after the New Hampshire primary when he lost badly there, only to recover and surprise everyone in South Carolina, go on to the nomination and and a big victory in 2020. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling uh, I'm surprised. Um, that, it, that he did this quite so quickly. I thought it would take him more time, uh, but I think he deserves enormous credit because he and his inner circle, I am sure, thought they could win this race. Uh, but the pressures became unbearable and untenable. And I think he's, uh, you know, he's graciously uh, made the right decision at this point, but it could not have been easy. And what do you think was the straw that broke the camel's back here? I mean, we saw over the last several weeks the pile of congressional Democrats that said, you know, I think it's time to pass the torch. Um, but we also saw recent polling come out from voters, you know, in the last week or so that more than the majority of voters surveyed thought Biden should step aside. Was it the polls from voters or was it this pile of, of Washington um, legislators that did this? What do you think was maybe the final thing that made him choose this yeah, path? I don't, I don't think the polls, I don't think the polls had anything to do with it. I would bet you that Joe Biden in his heart of hearts and even some of his inner circle believe that Joe Biden could still win this race if not for this enormous uh, rebellion among the entire Democratic Party establishment, uh, obviously led by uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, but including a lot of his former allies who um, I'm sure it was painful, but I, 
I think he realized that he could not win this race with a continuing hemorrhage of support among uh, Congress and, and, the, and the party establishment. Something notable that I took from this letter upon reading it was that there was a thanks and appreciation for Kamala Harris, but not this is who you should proceed with. Uh, what did you make of that? Yeah, it's really interesting. And, and, and just the fact that he made this announcement in the form of a statement rather than an Oval Office address, for example, which, um, which frankly is the way I thought he would have gone with such a momentous uh, uh, announcement. So I think it is notable and interesting that um, he doesn't anoint Kamala Harris. I think that uh, as a realistic, um, uh, just, just the reality is that the only plan B for the Democrats is Kamala Harris. I don't think you can deny the nomination to the first black vice president in American history and then expect your most critical constituency, uh, black voters, to turn out in November. So I think she's going to be the nominee. Um, but look, we've seen it's been a wild three week period. And as I say, the dramas will continue. And we've seen such fracture within the Democratic Party, which has often been a criticism of the GOP over the last several years, that there's so much party infighting, the Republicans can't get along. But this fracture that we've seen in the Democratic Party over the last several weeks has been really staggering. Um, will you talk a little bit about you know, who you see these Democrats rallying behind to move forward with. We heard Nancy Pelosi say she'd support an open nomination. Um, we've heard a lot of people supporting Kamala Harris. Um, you know, I know you said she is the obvious choice, but do you see, because of all of this fracture that exists, that other names are going to pop up here? Well, first, let me just say that I think sometimes um, you, you, unanimity uh, it, and scripted conventions that go exactly as you write them are sometimes overrated. Um, I thought that uh, the, Demo the Republicans had a had a smooth running convention, and then at the end, uh, Donald Trump shot himself in the foot. I'm sorry, an unfortunate uh, analogy here, but he certainly did himself no favors by then going off the deep end with a completely unhinged. Uh, talk about Hannibal Lecter and uh, and other crazy things. So I think I think that um, unanimity can be overrated. I think there's certain there's real complacency in the GOP right now. And Donald Trump is still an enormously unpopular figure. I think the Democrats have a real chance now to unite behind Kamala Harris or, or another candidate, but I think likely Kamala Harris and to really go at uh, Donald Trump, you know, a prosecutor against a uh, convicted felon, a woman who wants to expand reproductive freedoms against a guy who wants to outlaw abortion uh, just for openers. That, that, that's the message. Certainly going to be a very, very different narrative moving forward. Uh, huge breaking announcement from the the president today uh chris i would love if you would stand by with us because i want to go uh, to our scripts news correspondent maya rodriguez who